It's difficult to get excited about the latest iPhone when it rarely looks markedly different from previous models, and the benefits of upgrading annually aren't as noticeable compared to the big jump you get if you wait a few years. This year, that's different though, thanks mainly to the addition of one prominent feature, USB-C. Yes, the exact same USB-C that Android phones have been using since 2015. It's an example of Apple finally getting out of its own way and letting the iPhone play nicely with pretty much every other device and charger you could want to use it with. And it's one of the most liberating decisions the company has ever made. The iPhone 14 Pro did not get a radical design change from the iPhone 13 Pro, which in turn was not dramatically different from the iPhone 12 Pro. Likewise, the iPhone 15 Pro could be mistaken for any of its recent predecessors if you didn't look too closely. Taking the new iPhone out in a crowd during our review period netted not a single curious eye, and that lack of dazzle will be exacerbated once you throw a case on it and cover up nearly every noticeable difference. Yeah, it's a bummer. Using a case, which anyone in their right mind should, is kind of sad because the new titanium chassis on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max is really nice. The iPhone 14 Pro has glossy steel sides that love to collect fingerprints, but the new titanium sides on the iPhone 15 Pro resist them beautifully. The back features this sort of frosted glass that also resists fingerprints well, hides any scratches that might appear, and just feels really nice in the hand. It's smooth without being slippery. Apple also managed to reduce the size and weight of both the Pro and Pro Max without shrinking their 6.1 and 6.7 OLED screens respectively. Both reductions are minor, millimeters smaller and a scant few grams lighter, but hey, we'll take it. The only downside here is that just like nearly every year, the differences are just great enough that you'll need to get a new case. All right. Not only is the camera module slightly different, the physical size reduction is going to force the issue. Both dynamically adjust up to 120 hertz with Apple's ProMotion, have P3 wide color support, haptic touch, and both HDR and Apple's True Tone. All that is pretty much the same as the iPhone 14 Pro, but the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max get almost twice as bright at up to 2,000 nits of peak brightness. That is bright. Show yourself. The dynamic island introduced in the iPhone 14 Pro makes a return, as does the always on display, though you can turn it off if you want. If anything about the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max's exterior design could be called radical, it would be the decision to do away with the switch on the side that, since the very first iPhone, has toggled between ring and silent slash vibrate only mode and replaced it with what Apple calls the action button. Ooh, dynamic. While you can make that button do exactly what the previous switch did, it can also be assigned to a range of alternate tasks. Uh, open the camera or go straight to video mode, record a voice memo, turn on the flashlight, or even a shortcut of whatever you're choosing. It seems minor, but it's really a nice quality of life addition. It's time to talk about the best new feature on the iPhone. It finally, finally uses USB-C. Goodbye, lightning connector. See you in hell. I can't believe we were stuck with this limited slow cable since the iPhone 5 debuted 11 years ago. It cannot be overstated how big of a quality of life improvement this one upgrade is. Instead of having two cables on your desk, one to charge your PS5 controller and one to charge your iPhone, you can now have one and it significantly reduces the number of cables you need to carry when you travel. One caveat though, while the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max have USB-C, they don't have what most people would describe as fast charging. Apple says the Pro Max is able to give you up to a 50% charge in 35 minutes with a 20 watt adapter or higher, which by the way, not included with your phone. The Pro gets 50% charge in 30 minutes with the same adapter. That's decently fast, but not as fast as many might expect if they were coming from an Android device. Just because it has USB-C support doesn't mean it's your only option. Apple again brings back MagSafe, which was introduced in the iPhone 12 for wireless charging at 15 watts. Key is 7.5 watts. And it supports a number of peripherals, including a Belkin stand that will charge it and turn it into a bedside or desktop clock when docked. A nice little melding of hardware and software. Appreciate that. One last feature to mention is the iPhone 15 Pro has voice isolation capability for calls, so it is easier for the person you're calling to hear you if you're in a loud area. It works reasonably well and is nice to have when you're trying to have a conversation while washing dishes or while at a busy market. 
Apple spent a good bit of the iPhone 15 reveal event talking about the 15 Pro's gaming chops, even going so far as to promise that its new A17 Pro chip would bring AAA games like Resident Evil Village and Assassin's Creed Mirage, we're talking the full games here, not trimmed down mobile versions, to run natively on iPhone 15 Pro with enough power left over to enable ray tracing lighting effects. Not bad. While we weren't able to push the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max to their limits during our review period, since none of the games Apple highlighted were actually available yet, our reviewer was able to play both Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact and both ran extremely well with visual settings and frame rates cranked to the max. Didn't see any dropped frames or graphical glitches despite maximum settings, which is a notable improvement over last year's iPhone 14 Pro, which chugs even in the menu. Apple's OLED display also shines here. Battery life while gaming is good, but not exceptional. After just a few minutes playing Honkai Star Rail, the phone was down 5%. We estimated it was pulling about 1% of battery life for every minute and a half to two minutes, which is a pretty fast drain and would amount to around an hour and a half to two hours of intensive play without having to plug it back in. Apple says the iPhone 15 Pro can last for up to 20 hours of streamed video content, while the Pro Max can go for 25 hours, which is pretty close to what Samsung promises with its S23 Ultra. But games are far more energy intensive and will burn through the battery even faster. For the first time in a few years, only the iPhone 15 Pro Max gets the best camera Apple could offer, but that difference is reserved for the level of optical telephoto zoom. While the sensor behind that lens remains the same as last year, Apple put a new 120 millimeter tetraprism lens in front of it that gives you nearly double the optical zoom you'll get out of the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro. The quality of the images out of its 12 megapixel camera is pretty much as expected. You can just see from farther away. The main camera on both phones is improved by its ability to shoot 24 megapixel photos instead of last year's 12. Just like last year, it is possible to shoot with the full 48 megapixel resolution that the sensor captures, but you do sacrifice dynamic range in order to get that additional resolution. The resolution bump to 24 megapixels without sacrificing dynamic range in the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro gets a big thumbs up, especially if you're a photographer. To be frank, most users won't find themselves using smartphone photos in a way where 24 megapixels is going to change their lives, but anyone who plans to edit and otherwise publish these photos is nearly always going to be happy with a higher resolution. If nothing else, it lets you crop in more without losing details. Apple has also made portrait mode engage by default. If the camera senses a person or animal in the frame, it automatically captures a depth map that will allow you to add the depth effect later should you want it. That depth map also allows you to change the focus point between two subjects in post-production should you desire. And I think that is pretty damn cool. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max can also record up to 4K at 60p, but not out of the box. This is a feature that has been added thanks specifically to the speed provided by the aforementioned USB-C port. While all other resolutions and frame rates are available to record directly to the iPhone's internal storage, 4K at 60p requires an attached SSD. The good news is that all photos and videos can easily be transferred to and from that external drive at USB 3.0 speeds, which is a massive improvement to workflow over previous iPhones, which either required the pitifully slow lightning connection or the somewhat faster airdrop provided where you're trying to send it is also an Apple device. Now, data management is far faster and more platform agnostic. Apple's annual smartphone refreshes have felt especially incremental since the iPhone X, and at first blush, that appears to have happened again with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Their attractive titanium edges and useful, customizable action button are fairly subtle to the eye, and the first things to get covered up by a case, of course. That is, however, deceptive. Apple has changed quite a bit internally to make this year's phone its most compelling upgrade since the iPhone 11 especially if you're passionate about photography or video. While the universal compatibility and transfer speeds of USB-C are a headline addition, the upgraded gaming-ready processor, better camera software, and titanium chassis are all notable improvements. 
For more handheld gaming reviews, make sure to check out our review of the Asus ROG Ally. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.